Yeah, it was an impressive effort. But there were serious parts to the speech as well. Caleb, I've just been struck by how nasty everyone has been to Scott Morrison, the left and the right, absolutely smashing him. I mean, AUKUS, a very significant part of his legacy. Fine, there were a lot of bad calls during the pandemic, but most of those were from the states. The prime minister actually had decisive leadership. He made the, the country feel confident that he knew what he was doing. Um, he had the, you know, created the national cabinet. He stood up to China. He was a firm friend of Israel. He still fights against anti-Semitism. Um, you know, I think I think that whole Me Too movement with Brittany Higgins um, made a lot of the country dislike him, and that story is kind of unravelled now. Uh, that might be part of it. Uh, look, I'll, I will certainly give Morrison credit for AUKUS, um, and and I will give him credit for being the first, essentially, in the world to start questioning the origins of, of COVID and taking on China in that regard. And we paid a heavy price for that, but it was the right thing to do at the time. But you bring up National Cabinet. I mean, National Cabinet was an absolute rabble. At no point did they come out of any of those meetings and then all go and do exactly what they agreed to? That's Victoria was off. That's the no, no, but, but, the, but the point Daniel of it, the, the, point, the point of it was silly. Um, he backed the, the long border closures in places like Western Australia, he which he, he did. did it. No, he, he did it. He, he was trying to get them to open up. No, but he repeatedly 100 publicly he was trying to get them to open he up. Repeatedly he publicly back trying to get Mark them to McGowan. open up. No, yeah, I, I, he was publicly trying to get them to open the border. Well, it's not. That's not my recollection. And I think in the end, what cost Morrison is that he seemed ingenuine. Now, whether that is fair or not, I think that became the perception. And in politics, perception is reality. I mean, we want to talk about Brittany Higgins. He publicly apologised to her in Parliament, almost as though it was an admission that something had happened. He should never have done that. Bronwyn, how do you think the country will, in time, remember Scott Morrison? In time, I think history will be kinder to him than we are now, because so much of what Caleb said is just spot on. Um, the, the, the thing that uh, I think I find difficult was when he surrendered to the lobby and said we'd go for um, nil emissions by uh, 2050. Now, if he'd been really queued in, if he had had an election in November, instead of worrying about all that stuff, I think he would have won. So I think he lost his way there after the creation of the, the Cabinet. But AUKUS, AUKUS, I can't tell you, is so important. Having the courage to uh, cancel the French submarines mm. and the way he handled the negotiations with both Britain and the United States will be really quite remarkable in, in history's eyes. Mm. Mm. And that will be very important as... Um, I think uh, some of the policies with regard to COVID will be seen as good. Not the huge expenditure of money when big firms got money they were never entitled to, to pay back mm. or elevating the premiers, who most people had never heard of, mm. to being his equal mm. when the prime ministership is mm. uh, above the state premiers. Mm. So all those things, I think, over time will become less important and AUKUS itself will become the dominant memory of the Morrison government. The lasting legacy. Mm. Bronwyn Bishop, Caleb Bond, thank you both so much. Caleb, we'll see you 10 o'clock tonight.